To understand the basic idea behind conjuring analysis, let's play a fun little game of would you rather? You need to answer honestly. First question, would you rather have $10 million or $4.76? Think hard about this. Next question, would you rather have the power of flight or would you rather have the power of ear wiggling? Again, think carefully about this. Now it turns out when you ask these previous two questions, most people prefer $10 million over a little under $5. And most people prefer the power of flight over the power of ear wiggling. No insult to all those out there who can wiggle their ears. I can't. But let's play one more time. Now which one of these two choices would you prefer? Would you rather have the power of flight and $4.76 or would you rather have $10 million and the power of ear wiggling? You can only pick one of these two. I've asked this question to quite a few students and it turns out about 70 to 75 percent of students prefer $10 million and the power of ear wiggling, but a good portion of them instead choose to pick the power of flight and forego all that money. The difference between this question and the previous two is there's a trade-off. There's two superior options, but you can't have them both at once. Maybe more plain marketing language, let's think about a new phone. Which one would you rather have, assuming all else about the phone is exactly equal? Would you rather have a phone that typically has a 24-hour battery life and 64 gigabytes of onboard storage? Or would you rather have a phone that's exactly the same in every other way, but has a 14-hour battery life and 128 gigabytes of onboard storage? Most people want as much battery life as possible and as much onboard storage as possible. But for marketers, we probably can't offer that superior option at a price point they'll tolerate. So there has to be some sort of trade-off. It behooves marketers to figure out, in the face of trade-offs, what do consumers most prefer? That's the essence of conjoint analysis.